when we link principles and theory to art and practice. That's when science becomes meaningful. What is so special about this project here, it's somehow in between arts, science and engineering. The question is, if the glass is a material that is going to be constantly used in the field of design and architecture, do we know how to take advantage of the structural capacity of the material itself? One of the reasons behind this project is that we really want for the glass to do everything, from the load bearing, to the aesthetics, to the construction techniques. Glass Bridge is a manifestation of a narrative that architecture could create elegant, efficient structures, although that they might look daunting and impossible in the first glance. I was lucky enough to realize that there is an unexplored field of design that could relate structural engineering to architecture called graphical aesthetics. This method is quite old, I would say around like 150, 160 years. When French mathematicians looked into how they can describe the forms that are in pure compression or pure tension using geometric techniques. We're looking at art that is being used in application in a structural context. When you look at the bridge, you should envision thousands of pounds forcing down on it and envision the distribution of all that weight going to the abutments in a very, very efficient way. But also recognize that the aesthetic of what you're looking at really makes an impression on you. We really look for projects that push the boundaries of what glass can do as a material and that inspire people to think about glass in different sorts of ways. The glass bridge spoke so much to what we think about as being possible in the material of glass. The concept that we're looking to exploit, which is compression as a mechanism of uh, resisting loads, is actually very, very old. And if you go into any cathedral in Europe, you're gonna see these vaulted arches that are holding up the structure, and they basically operate in very much the same way. These sorts of structures follow the rules of nature. When you look at the skeleton of animals, when you look at the tree, everywhere you could see all these tension compression system that efficiently distribute the material where exactly is needed. So the theory was there, but only recently with the advancement in computer science, we were able to produce and basically build a structure that could have been designed 150 years ago. This project is kind of the epitome of the work that we do in this lab because it's a polyhedral system. Those geometries consist of planar faces, and glass is used as planar material. And it's ideal to showcase this made out of glass because glass is a very difficult material to work with. And if you can show that you can handle the forces within glass, you can definitely do it with any other material. to thinking about glass as being a really fragile material. And one of the things that this project does is disrupt that narrative. Glass, it's so delicate and strong at the same time, because if you put it on the wrong angle, it will fail. And on the other hand, you can walk on it easily. And of course, it's the only transparent material with such a durability that we use it everywhere from facades to cars, from the screen we are talking. We wanted to really push the construction methods related to glass. We wanted to show how you can be innovative with the use of material, how you can minimize the use of material without compromising the function. And then we also had intentions to create an elegant structure. 
One of the beautiful moments under the bridge is that arch because that is spinal movement together with asymmetric boundaries reflected to the piece created by Roman Carilia would create a very impressive feeling of the structure spanning over that distance. The artwork underneath the glass bridge is called Up is Down, designed by Romain Crelier, and I think it's a piece that really grounds it in space, situating the glass bridge into a context. The artist, he was interested in a dialogue between a highly articulated natural network with a very rigid reflective surface. It really creates these beautiful reflections to allow visitors to see underneath the surface and sort of discover the glass bridge in that way. The brilliance and the success of this bridge is not only in its innovation, but it's in its beauty. That luminescence, that transparency, the way it interacts with light, all those features are what makes the glass bridge a really spectacular work of art, as well as a feat of engineering. We wanted to exercise all these techniques in order to show you can take advantage of the existing technology into making these pieces that are quite efficient. What's unique about what we're doing, I think, is the modular approach that really lends a certain degree of flexibility in your ability to construct. So we're not dealing with enormously large pieces. So in order to make that feasible, we had to start at the hollow glass unit. So we built one here in our structures lab and we loved the look from the very beginning. We looked at this thing and said, we're onto something here. We put a ton of time with the test setup. We had the hollow glass unit in there. We pressed go on the hydraulic actuator and we had a digital load readout. The actuator has a 35,000 pound capacity. We went past five, we gave each other high fives. We got to 10, we looked at, man, this is really great stuff. And we got to 35,000 pounds and the actuator shut off. That unit could take 37,000 pounds of load. We realized that, yes, you can rely on glass to take loads. This complex geometry combined with this hollow glass unit was never done before. And I think it's very special to make it with the, the least material needed. This is just an example, a gate that opens all the opportunities for future architects and engineers that look at the conventional way of building structures and say, OK, but as a second thought, we might approach this differently. If we could develop this idea into the rest of the structures, we could reduce the pressure that we have on our natural resources. When we look at our energy and climate future, we need to address energy and climate design. And we need to prepare architects into the future to be able to use materials more effectively. This is an exceptional piece of work that will be a teaching tool. We are aiming to create a money waterfall. My only hope is to open a door for future explorations, to look into innovative methods of construction that are more efficient, environmentally friendly, and reduce carbon footprint. Similar to this glass structure, we need all these single pieces within this society to work together and to trust each other to work as a unit. We are trying to depict a better future for ourselves and also for the next generation to come.